Hello to people! We have another exciting Mac trail for you guys today, as always, and it feels great to be saying that again. I am back with a quick Mac video. I'm going to be showing you guys some very useful applications and also a uh, plugin for Safari. Uh, but very quickly before that, I would like to um, give a quick mention to Sean or Seen. It's spelled Sean, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, the Apple dude for creating the intro to my past video. So big thanks to him. Continuing on with the uh, Call of Duty stuff, uh, I am going to be purchasing a uh, recording system and maybe a pair of headphones like you guys requested of me. If you guys would like to help contribute towards that, whether it's a dollar, ten dollars, five dollars, fifty cents, whatever it may be, um, I will have some sort of donate link in the right if you guys want to uh, donate to the um, Xbox fund. Well, not actually an Xbox, but the uh, that fund. That would be great. Moving on with the Mac tutorials, we have a bunch of applications today. I'm going to start this off with one called Punakia. It's kind of fun to say, Punakia. And Punakia is an actual way, better way to organize your files on your Mac. And also what's really cool about this is that it adds tags uh, to the spotlight search. So for example, right here on my desktop, I have uh, some of my, my uh, history homework from Monday night. Um, so I'm just going to uh, drag that into Punakia and I can start entering some tags. So school history homework, and yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So now, under all items or, you know, wherever I may be, if I click the history tag under documents, there is my current events uh, paper. So I could just open it up right from there. Also, another really cool feature, let's say I was on the internet and let's say I was on my website looking at some of my fabulous wallpapers. And let's say I wanted to save this bookmark. Maybe I didn't want to put it in my bookmark or for whatever reason, maybe I wanted to have it on my desktop or somewhere in my Mac. I could just drag the from the URL, bring it over to the right hand side, and this little menu pops up where I can just drag and drop files right there. So like if the Punakia window was either minimized or whatever it is, I can have easy access by the sidebar. So then I just, you know, let go. The tagger opens up and I can, you know, Mac OS X tutorials, um, wallpapers. And I can do that. So right now I have two files in here. And now let's say I wanted to search them in Spotlight. Maybe I wanted to bring up my history homework again. I would open up Spotlight and I could type history homework. And right there, you guys will see that the first one is my current events. So all I would have to do is just click that. So that's really cool that it adds tags to Spotlight. And that is it for Punakia. That's the first application. Again, links to all these will be in the sidebar. Moving on, we have iBackup, and it has to do with what's in the title. It backs up. Um, if you guys have ever used Time Machine, which I'm sure most of you guys have, you guys know that there are practically no features at all. And iBackup can really get into depth when it comes to uh, backing up your files. What's really cool about this is that you can choose what to back up and what not to back up. I know for me, because I have a lot on my iMac, that takes an extremely long time backing up stuff that hasn't even changed. Like, for example, my, you know, may maybe my pictures don't change that much and I don't want them to be backed up. Maybe I have a bunch of files in there and it can take up a lot of time. All I would have to do is just not check it and then it wouldn't back up. What's also cool is that there are system settings, so I can choose to back up things like what's in my dock, my wallpaper, um, my uh, menu bar, all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty cool. And if I wanted to go into preferences, there is a little uh, scheduler right there that I can, um, I guess, tell when I want my computer to back up. I made a video on kind of probably the most coolest way to back up your computer ever. So I'll have an annotation to that. Um, but that is iBackup, pretty simple application. 
Uh, the next one is called Magic or Madge iCal. I'm assuming Madge is the abbreviation for Magic, and it actually sits up in the menu bar right here between the time and the spotlight. And all it is, it's just a miniature calendar. So if I were to click on it, a calendar would drop down um, with the dates, and I can just kind of scroll through that quickly. Um, I can also click this, and I can um, make it a charcoal design, giving it a darker background. But there's also some pretty cool stuff in the preferences, too. Um, there's a time. I can actually have this display of the time. Then I can have the date and calendar, and I have miscellaneous things and all that. But it's actually a really nice thing just to have in your... Um, menu bar in case you don't want to have to constantly open up iCal. And for people that would um, not want that in there, I'll show you guys quickly how to uh, get rid of that. Just open up terminal and type kill all madge iCal. And there it is there. Now it's gone. And this final application is called iTunes Alarm. Again, in the title, it is an alarm system for your Mac. Um, that works hand in hand with iTunes. So this is it. It's a you know very simple window, but all the uh, hidden stuff is when you happen occurs when you press settings. So I can set several different alarms. I can choose the time, snoozing, how much it fades in, fades out, the volume, uh, when it goes off, uh, and I can choose a playlist if I want to or a separate song. So it's just a cool way you know maybe to wake up in the morning. I know that. I have trouble waking up and my iHome for some reason is broken and the time doesn't always say what the real time is. So having this nice iTunes alarm comes in very handy. So that is iTunes alarm. Now the final thing is a plugin for Safari called Glimz. And what it does is, it actually does a bunch of stuff. What it really does is it, I guess, adds to the Google search. The first feature it does is that I can actually change the Google search to a plethora of different things. Yahoo, Bing, who uses Bing, it's Microsoft, um, Ask, About, Amazon, Facebook, all things like that. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to search Apple. You guys can see already that it's bringing up a uh, new interface window. Let's say I wanted to search Apple iPad. It will give me the first top three results along with how many results if I wanted to redefine my search, how many results would come up. So I'm just going to search Apple iPad. Now, as you guys can see right here, the interface of Google.com has changed. It gives you a little preview of what is um, on the page, for example. So there are also a bunch of other features that come with um, this plugin. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, four applications, one plugin. Uh, all these links will be in the sidebar. Um, along with everything else I mentioned, it's great to be back doing Mac tutorials, guys. I will have another one either coming this weekend or Monday, so look forward to that. Hope you all enjoy this tutorial. My name is Matt Fisher, and take care.